Hey, Daniel here from Smart Home Perfected. Today we are reviewing the DreamBot Z10 Pro, which comes with smart LiDAR navigation, 3D detection and avoidance to avoid chewing up cables, and a self-emptying docking station. Let's get started. Links to the product are in the description below. Before we begin, I'd like to point out that DreamTech provided this robot vacuum to us free of charge for the purposes of this review. That being said, it doesn't impact on the honesty of the review itself. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up below, subscribe to our channel for more smart home content, or leave a comment below. So a quick overview of the features. As you can see, this comes with a base station, um, which helps with automatic recharging and emptying of the dust compartment within the robot vacuum. It has around a four liter large vacuum dust bag, which they say gives you around 65 days um, between empties. In previous robot vacuums, I've actually found that, that that tends to be an understatement that you can actually get even more out of it, depending on how dusty your house is. On the suction side, the robot comes with 4,000 PA or Pascal pressure units, which is pretty high as in it's definitely above average. While the inbuilt battery should get you around 150 minutes runtime, which is perfect for medium, small to medium sized homes. There are four suction modes within the app itself. The highest one obviously being the loudest at 4,000 PA. So when setting up schedules or setting specific spot cleans or room cleans um, or one-off cleans, you can choose uh, which mode you want the, the robot to run on. This bot is a hybrid vacuum and mop. So it comes with a 400 milliliter dust box along with a 150 milliliter electric water tank. Similar to the different suction modes, there are three levels of water volume that can be adjusted within the app itself. On the navigation side, there's a LiDAR unit at the top, constantly spinning and mapping out the, the, the territory, while there's a 3D obstacle sensor at the front, which dynamically avoids cables or anything that's laying about on the floor. Within the app then, you can set no-go zones or uh, do not cross lines um, if there are particular areas you want the robot to avoid. On the smart control side, you can command it with Alexa, as well as remote control via the app also. On the navigation side, LiDAR can work in dim or low light environments, which is different to B-SLAM technology, which some competitors use, which is essentially a camera inbuilt into the, the, the bot itself. Along with LiDAR and the 3D obstacle sensor at the front, there's also a cliff sensor or an anti-drop sensor at the front, so it doesn't fall off um, at, from, from a height. While there's no HEPA filter on this spot, which is a downside, all of the dust is collected in a dust collection bag, so the emptying process is pretty clean and straightforward compared to the likes of a Dyson, for example. So a quick run through of the app setup. It's as simple as scanning a QR code, downloading the Xiaomi Home app, um, and then following the step-by-step -step instructions on setting it up. So as you see, a mistake I made when setting this up was I set up the robot in a different room on the same floor as my router, um, went through the installation process, but actually it couldn't complete the pairing because the device wasn't close enough to the router. So when setting this up, make sure that you bring the bot literally next to next to your router um, and it should, it should set up correctly then. The reason for this is it sets up a temporary network, so it needs to be in very close proximity to work. Once the initial pairing is complete, that temporary network is no longer needed and it just runs off the standard Wi-Fi. So after adding the device, within the Xiaomi Home app, you can then select a room or assign the bot to a room. If you get an option to update the firmware, always important to do that just to make sure you're running off the, the, the latest version. So a quick look at the bot working. This is running around our living room and they're the, the dining table and chairs. Um, and as you can see, it's it's using both the LiDAR navigation at the top, the bump sensor on the front. Um, but you'll see how at times the bot reverses when it senses an obstacle in its way. Um, and interestingly, at times there isn't an obstacle there. So the obstacle detection is is really good, but it's not perfect. Um, and that's, that's something to consider. 
so you can see yeah it, it sometimes does it does a kind of a, a circle around something that doesn't exist possibly related to the brightness it was a really bright day when we actually tested this out and there was a lot of sunlight um but yeah there's a little bit of reversing around the bot is also the perfect width to actually get in through the tables and chairs um it's it does it in some occasions here and um, so it's able to properly vacuum under the table which is great So a quick test that we laid out for the bot, we laid out some cereals onto the ground and set up a spot cleaning uh, cycle within the app. So we dragged a rectangular zone around this area and got the bot to, to kick off and, and clean it up. Um, as you'll see, interestingly, it, yeah, it, it works around the perimeter. So you'll see that it's it, it goes around the foot of uh, the, the cabinet here, um, works right into the base station before then going in a pattern back and forth. Um, does a decent job with this. Um, we set it out as a single cleaning run, so not twice or three times. Um, it doesn't clean up everything perfectly, um, but, but does a good job. Um, typically, you would probably need two or three runs just to, to clean up absolutely everything. But overall, decent performance. A quick test of the mopping capability. I think the mopping side of this bot is really what lets it down. Um, it is a hybrid bot, so you would expect the mopping facility to, to work as well as the vacuuming facility, and, and it just doesn't. The vacuuming facility is, is in a different league to the mopping facility. It's quite a thin pad, and um, there's no downward pressure really, and um, there's no rotation, there's no movement of the mop pad, so it's essentially just wetting the floor as opposed to cleaning the floor. There's no detergents that, that you could use. And um, it still does well in terms of the pattern and cycle. So it's getting uh, it's getting into all of the areas that you need it to get into. But it, it just, other than wetting the floor, it's not really cleaning it. So here's a sped up version of the initial mapping of the, the two rooms that we set it out. Um, so this is about, I think this took half an hour and this is about one minute. So you can see the pattern that it's doing, which is it's creating the perimeter. Um, it's then reviewing the um, boundaries around the, the tables and chairs and then going through a cycle um, of, of, of vacuuming then back and forth. Then it goes into the second room, gets lost under our sofa, comes back out again. Um, so it's completed the perimeter. Um, and it works through. As you can see, it did a little bit of a loop there, which again is, is I think, related to that 3D obstacle detection. Um, loops to the right, there's actually a chair there. Um, and then goes back and forth, back and forth. So generally, re re uh, performs pretty good. Um, the obstacle detection every now and again sends it into a bit of a spin when there might not be something there, um, but, but a good performance otherwise. Finally, looking at the self-emptying capability. Interestingly, it took about five minutes um, to actually find the base station. Um, I don't know, I, I possibly have the base station too close to the foot of the table and too close to the wall. So that's just something to consider to give it a bit more room. Um, again, possibly the 3D obstacle sensor uh, uh, causing issues there, but um, eventually it, it finds its way home anyway. Um, a ridiculously loud empty in facility so don't run it at night um, otherwise you'll wake yourself up um, but massive suction so it, it, it does the job correctly so now a run through of the app you can see the two rooms that we've uh, we've mapped um, and then you can see how we can create these no-go zones create virtual walls or 
if it's not a no-go zone, maybe a no-mop zone, um, if, if there's carpets or anything like that that you want to avoid um, getting, getting water on. So our back door, we, we close off a, a, as a, a, a virtual wall just to make sure in case if the door was open, it doesn't wander out into the garden. The different suction settings you can see there and the different mop settings, um, depending on, on, on how much of a cleaning you need. Um, so a quick look, um, different languages um, in terms of the settings. Um, there's a, a way to use a carpet boost, which increases the suction if it senses carpet. Child lock is very good because kids are obviously drawn to a, a, a robot wander around your house. Um, you can set how often you want the dust collection to happen. Um, you can set schedules, which is crucial because you want this running on, on a regular basis to, to maintain your, your home. The maintenance of accessories and how much time is left before you need to actually maintain those accessories. Um, you can change the device name and, and its location within this, this uh, Xiaomi Home app. A nice feature is the multi-floor maps. Um, so you can, if you wanted to move this upstairs every now and then, or downstairs every now and then, um, you can have a different map for those you don't need to remap at each time. So there you have it, the Dream Tech Bot uh, Z10 Pro. Ridiculously uh, powerful suction, really impressive on the vacuuming front. Um, app is quite useful, has all the functions that you need. Let down a little bit by the, the mopping function, um, but there are more dedicated robot mops out there if, if that's really what you want. Great LiDAR navigation, really works well at mapping out your home and, and actively building out that map as, as you know the rooms change dynamically as, as things get moved around. 3D obstacle detection on the balance of things is, a, is definitely a plus, is a positive with this, and particularly if you have a lot of you know cables lying around or um, anything that could just get in the way and, and uh, end up being sucked up into a robot vacuum. Um, the 3D obstacle detection definitely does a job there. Um, it isn't 100% right now, but that's something that the, the, the team could possibly evolve in the future in terms of firmware updates and stuff like that. But the, the tech is definitely in the, uh, in the device. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed the review. Um, subscribe to our channel again for, for more content like this. Give us a like below. Thanks for watching.